Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I want to talk today about oh, essentially what I woke up to. I did a video the other day about gas stations are already running out of fuel because the pipeline shut down. Well, you know, not only do we have a pipeline shut down, but we have a massive clog in the delivery system internationally, right? We have ships that are being bottlenecked at ports and in places like the Suez Canal. I mean, we've seen in the last month, quite frankly, the most incredible things ever to happen, I think, in the history of supply chains, uh, you know, with the blocking of the Suez Canal and so on. And, you know, I, I've done this, I've said this analogy before, but it's like a freeway of two lanes that's moving all at the same direction, at the same speed, but then somebody, you know, in that slow lane, all of a sudden just pulls out in the fast lane next to a car that it wants to pass, and it passes that next car super slow. Well, as everybody else is jamming up to that uh, car, they slow down uh, to go that car speed, and then the next car slows down, the next car slows down. But the problem is, what happens is, every time another car gets behind another car because of reaction time, all right? Now think about this, reaction time is a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and what happens is, every car that starts to come in breaks a little harder, and then, uh, has to slow down even more. Well, then as it slows down too much, it breaks more than the car in front of it. What happens is, let's set down the coffee. As these two cars, this one's coming up and it breaks, right? And there's now they're moving at the same speed, but technically they're not. What happens is this guy actually maintains his speed and this one backs off to now produce that same safety zone that it originally had, right? Because he doesn't want to, you know, he almost rear-ended him, let's say, but he, he doesn't want to rear-end him again. So what happens is as he's going, he slows down a little bit. Well, what happens is now that car behind him has to brake even harder and then it has to readjust too. Well, what happens is a mile down the road, what those people don't understand is traffic is stopped. And that's what we have going on right now. And very, very few people understand it. Now, you follow me because, you know, I bring you a lot of information and understanding about markets because of my, my background as an investor for the last 20, you know, 21, 22, well, actually, before the dot-com, so it was 23 years. Been investing in real estate for 21 years. My thing is, is that even people around me don't understand it. And when, you know, I said, someday I'm going to call you and say, today's the day. Well, it's funny, cause today I called someone and said, hey, hey, today's the day. You need to go down to the store. You need to sit down and just calmly write down some things that you need because uh, the supply chain is collapsing right now. And and I can't tell you when it's going to go like to your local store, right? Where they go, hey, look, we don't have any flour. We don't have we don't have any gasoline, you know, but right, it's started. The, the event has started and we just don't know how long it's going to take. So what I wanted to talk to you about today is what uh, the government is going to do in, in reaction to this. Um, Every time throughout history, especially modern history, a government gets involved when prices go sky high, inflation's picking up, and we have supply chain disruptions, they do two things. They do, they implement price controls, um, which, is, which is never good, and then they implement rationing, okay? They try and demonize all the people that you know, are going out and buying a bunch of toilet paper and stuff. Um, the facts are we don't even have to get to that point. See, see, there are, what, 35,000 people on this channel, which I'm so grateful for. And again, thank you so much for all the new subscribers and the people that are hitting that thumbs up button for me because that's getting this message out. That's a free way to support the channel. And then for the people that are sharing these videos on Facebook, you know, they're just silently going, oh, I saw this video, I just shared it. You know, they don't have to say what their feelings are about this, but it gets that information, and especially in Facebook, in front of a bunch of people that are, quite frankly, zombies. Um, but you know, uh, price controls that when they're put into place, uh, they're never good because what happens when when all of a sudden you're told by an, an authority uh, and you own a company, let's say that makes uh, toilet paper, they said, hey, you're not allowed to sell it for a more price because you're price gouging. Well, a lot of times companies aren't necessarily price gouging. Yeah, it does happen and they, they do. There are people that take advantage of these situations, that's for sure. Um, and the truth comes out in, in this kind of situation where they go, okay, um, we're stuck paying, selling it for this much. Well, if they're still making a profit, they're gonna sell it, okay? So so that does work. The, where, the part where it doesn't work is when their supply chain is broken down and they're having a hard time getting materials and they're going, you know, I can barely get the material or it's costing me more. Well, then what they do is they say, okay, if you wanna put a price control on me, fine, I just won't sell it, That's end of story. 
and it's just because I'm gonna lose money doing it. That's what we saw with the trucking industry back in 2007 when fuel prices were skyrocketing. They were just pulling over on the side of the road and going, we're not delivering this. We can't even make the money to, to put the fuel in our trucks right now because of the way they get paid in their invoices. That's a whole nother uh, issue that we're gonna see here pretty soon is invoice factoring, the rates at which they go for. But I know most of you are sitting there going, what the heck is invoice factoring? But uh, go look it up. It's actually pretty scary. It's how worldwide banks make about 80% of their profits. Um, but anyway, so my thing is that I think today is the day. I think that it's important uh, to just not panic. It's not like today's the day, tomorrow everything's gonna collapse. It's just, there's never been a better point than today to sit down and just come up with a list and go, hey, you know what, what, what do we use? What do we use? Let's just go run down to the store and let's go look for some deals. Like there's some coupons or some flyers. You just go down there and get yourself a little extra toilet paper. Don't go and buy a ton because that'd be stupid because eventually that stuff just turns into dust. Um, but you know, I think 90 days is a good deal. And then you're letting that, 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 uh, re, you know, the, the store to rejuvenate and go and get more stuff. You know, if you wanted to go buy yourself some beans or some flour or things that last, um, you know, today is the day not to let your gas tank run empty. I, I, mean, I, I see people all the time that they run their car empty. It's like, you know what? I think at this point, it's important to keep a half a tank. When it gets to half a tank, just fill it up. It's the same amount of gas. It's just the different mentality of like, well, what if tomorrow that gas station's out? Well, I've got at least a half a tank, if not a full tank, or maybe just roll it three, you know what? Keep it at three quarters. Uh, I think that's really important now. It's just changing your mentality is all. So I wanna put this video out to, um, to just, oh, look, there's a lot of stuff going on. We've got possibly a very serious situation um, in Israel right now and you know geopolitical threats are very serious uh, we see the blame game going on right now with the hack and uh, the facts are you could blame anybody but for anything it does nothing it just does nothing it just what it matters is what you're doing with your time your money um, we're seeing commodities explode everywhere this is the time to start looking at what's going really going on with the stock market and what's really going on why is Bitcoin flying up why is uh, uh, commodities soaring everywhere. What are the banks actually saying? They're, the sad thing is they're actually all telling you the truth and they're showing you the future. And uh, you know why they're showing you the future? Because even if they're wrong, but they believe it, they have so much money, they're out buying it, which means it's going to come true. That's the other thing people don't realize is you can't really fight the Fed. You can't fight the, uh, the banks, the big boys, because when they want something, they're going to make it happen. So why not invest like them? All right, guys, with that being said, I hope you guys have an awesome day. It's actually good news. Whenever you hear something ahead of time and you know what, what's going on, you just move to avoid the craziness, but the fool rushes head first right into the train. All right, guys, being, I got nothing else. The Economic Ninja is out.